Can I have 27 seconds to tell you why I'm calling? Do you want to meet Tuesday or Wednesday? We discovered a breakthrough that lets you get ripped abs in only six days. Can I get on your calendar? The problem with language like this is that your prospects can smell your commission breath. Prospects think that salespeople are dishonest and biased because they have a vested interest. They get something out of successfully persuading you so people are resistant to the pitch. Research shows that when you sell something, you actually view it more favorably, which makes you come across as pushy. When prospects feel the push, they pull away. So what's the way out? Instead of vomiting your value proposition in the first five seconds, it's better to pique curiosity and let prospects discover on their own if they want to continue the conversation. How do you do that? Let me walk you through a framework. First, there's a preparation step. You have to answer this question. What does your prospect want but doesn't have? For example, I sell this badass B2B growth guide. And so what I want is more reach, more people to read my posts. Because the more people that read my posts, the more people view my website, the more people view the landing page for the badass B2B growth guide, and the more people buy it. So reach is a currency. What don't I know? Well, I only know how to get reach on LinkedIn. And clearly there are salespeople that are my ideal buyers that might miss my posts completely, or that might be in places where I'm not. What can I now do with your product or service that I can't do now? I could reach more salespeople and ultimately sell more badass B2B growth guides. The next thing we need to do before we pick up the phone is set our right intention. The intention most people have is to book a meeting, which is perfectly understandable because we've been conditioned our whole life to get things, you know, get on the Dean's list, get to the top of the list. So you're the number one performer, make 50 dials, book 25 meetings. But when you feel pushy on a phone call, prospects pull away and the get is what causes the reactants. So we have to shift our intent a little bit away from the get and toward getting not meetings, but more truth. And the truth of every conversation is one of two things. Yes, the prospect is interested in sharing more and continuing the conversation or no, they're not at this time. Oddly enough, when you detach from the outcome, you sound less salesy and spend far less time chasing and also make more sales. So now that we've set our right intention and we know something the prospect doesn't know that can help them be more awesome, we're ready to make the phone call. So let me take you through the framework. Part one is what to say at hello. The strongest way to open up a cold call is if you can reference a social connection that you have in common with the prospect, even if it's a loose one. So that might sound like this. Um, hey, Josh, I'm X with Y. We've never met, but I'm familiar with your company through Tito Bort and was hoping I could ask you a couple quick questions. That's going to get a very high positive response because I know Tito and we're socially connected and you're referencing that on the call. Now, I realize you may not always be able to do that. So there's another approach you can use that I call creating tension. What do I mean by tension? You could think of it like a cliffhanger. If you've ever watched a show on Netflix, you know at the end of the series, they leave you hanging. They create this open loop, a gap from what you know to what you wanna know. So you let that timer tick down and watch the next episode. You can actually do that in your opener too. Um, That might sound like this. Um, Hey Josh, I'm X with Y, we've never met. But I was on your LinkedIn and noticed something interesting about your post. So I was hoping I could ask you a couple quick questions. Or I was on your website 
and noticed something interesting. So I was hoping I could ask you a couple quick questions. That's going to leave people a little curious. What is it that you noticed on my LinkedIn or about my posts? Part two of the call, learn the current way your prospect is getting the job done today. Nobody's sitting around doing nothing. So we want to learn how they're getting the job done so we can explore if we can help them potentially do it better. We want to do this by asking a multiple choice question that also demonstrates we've got expertise in this area. Nobody wants to hire a triathlon coach that hasn't finished a marathon and your prospects don't want to talk to somebody that's below them or that has less expertise. So we're going to actually ask a question that uses very specific lingo from the prospects industry to establish that we're at the same level or even above them with regards to expertise. And here's how that might sound. Hey, Josh, I'm just curious. How are you posting so frequently? Are you using Sprout Social, Hootsuite, posting stuff manually? Notice what I did there. I'm being very specific around the different ways the prospect is probably getting the job done today. And when you're more specific and crispy and you're using the prospect's language, you're going to be disassociated with the negative stereotype people have of salespeople. Part three, illuminate what's possible. Nobody likes to stand still. They're always looking for a way to improve their life situation. So do I and so do you. So we're going to ask a question that shines a light on what's possible or a problem they may not know exists. And so that might sound like this. Hey, Joshua, what are you doing to reach salespeople who don't see your posts? That question is going to make a prospect scratch their head and think, I'm not sure. What are you talking about? It's at this point in the conversation where your prospects typically will say something like, well, wait a second, what do you mean? Like, what do you do? And I notice what's happening now. The prospect is actually asking you questions. So the whole dynamic of the call changes from you pushing to them pulling. And once a prospect starts to pull, it is now time for you to pitch, but also do it in a way that creates even more tension so they want to continue the conversation with you. So that might sound like this. Prospect says, so wait, what do you do? And I might say, you know, we show information product creators like yourself or we show info product creators like X and Y, people that they would know, a lesser known approach to reach salespeople who don't see your posts on LinkedIn ultimately driving more sales of your guide. Not sure if it's a fit, but thought you might be interested. So let's listen to that again. What do you do? Uh, We show info product creators like X, a new approach, a different approach that might not be on your radar to reach salespeople who can't be reached on LinkedIn, who miss your posts, ultimately driving more sales of your guide by getting more reach. Josh, not sure it's a fit, but I thought you might be interested. Notice the tonality is laid back and the language thought you might be interested. It's non-assumptive. This pitch is for a info product creator like myself, but it can easily be modified for your audience. Hope this was helpful. Have an awesome day.